with the same lender. We can transfer to the new facility terms at any time before 30th June by giving five days notice. The old and new facilities contain quarterly covenant tests. Management of B intend to roll over before the next covenant test. Financial statements are authorized for issue on 1st March. What's happening here? It can do it before 30th June by giving five days notice. Quarterly covenant test, they intend to roll over. Discretion exists when the rollover can occur. In this case, intention is to roll over. The debt is non cap I think this is my last example here. Yeah? Entity B is preparing its 31st December financial statements. Five-year loan that is due to be settled in six months' time. In December, it agrees a forward starting facility with the same lender that will replace the existing facility terms on 30th June. So it's going to replace it, right? They intend to roll over. The old and new facilities contain a requirement in the contract to not raise more than 5 million in share capital. However, on 1st March, management decide to raise 6 million in capital. So what's happening here? They are told specifically, listen, um, do you have intention to roll over? Yes, we have intention to roll over. But after year end, their actual actions that they're doing is breaching it. So, but let's ask the question here. What is the position at balance sheet date? Non-current. And for, it's still going to be non-current. Because we're looking at the snapshot at that point in time, and it is non-current. All right, conclusion. The points, I, I hope you take this. I hope you take note of this. Identify the facility terms that exist at the reporting date. Read and understand them. Understand the conditions at reporting date, and I think this one I can't emphasize enough. Take action before reporting date. Nobody is stopping you. Nobody is holding your hands and saying, don't do anything before balance sheet date. Far too often clients come to us on the 4th or 5th of January and want to backdate things. You can't. Make the decision or make the amendment before balance sheet date. You've got two months or one and a half months to look at your covenants and make the change. All right. We've taken the questions already, but if there are any further questions on this topic. Yeah. Ah, interesting. Interesting question. Let me, let me answer it. I'll repeat the question for the benefit of everyone. The company had to pay the at balance sheet date, it, it became imminent that it, has to be, it was current. It applied for a rollover. The rollover was only obtained in January. What is the balance sheet position? Unfortunately, the balance sheet position is current. Thank you. Unfortunately. The reality is, if, even if that person is on a holiday, please call him, tell him to send the paperwork on 31st December. Don't backdate. Backdate is fraud, but the reality is try to get it done before the 31st of December because what the balance sheet is going to reflect is the 31st December position, that waiver or that rollover intention wasn't crystallized. We're looking at the condition at balance sheet day. So even if there is an informal email, I mean, I don't think that informal email is sufficient. I think we need something in paper. And you know what, if the bank is really so genuine about it, they wouldn't mind giving you the paper. You understand it? It's, it's, it's maybe from their perspective they worried about current and non-current on the asset side. But the asset side, is, it's, it's simple. The asset side, you look at expectation. It's the liability side, we have to worry about the contract. All right. So unfortunately, in that situation, my face value, if at face answer would be, it stays current. So get it done before year end. Uh, sorry, Yusuf. Uh, as, as we know that, that uh, in case of the raining finance and overdraft here in Pakistan, I mean, and most of the cases like uh, we just talked that we have the ability and the intention. And uh, the, the intention is actually that, that and, and the, most, the historical facts shows that more, more of the, more than the 80 to 90 percent are rolled over. So in that case, would that be a current or non-current? But uh, usually the classification doesn't yeah. at, at this moment doesn't uh, reflect this fact. Right. You see the wording in the standard is discretion and intention. 
If you don't have discretion, you're already at current. You understand that? If you don't have the ability to roll over, but you have the intention, no matter how good your intention is, how, how genuine that intention is, the wording in IS-1 says discretion and intention. But I think discretion is first. You understand that? Everybody has the intention to roll over. How do we audit your intention? <laughs> we can't. You understand my point? Discretion is critical. For me, I think discretion is more important. Intention is just the follow through. Nobody will want to pay the thing immediately when they can defer the payment, especially in current circumstances. Thank you for your questions. I'm going to limit it to two questions because I want to continue, if that's okay with you. All right, further questions? And if you have an answer for my government grant question, we can take it afterwards at dinner. All right. Now, I'm going to talk about IFRS 9, Financial Instruments Classification and Measurement. And I'm going to quote, before I start off here, I want to quote Sir David Tweedy. Sir David Tweedy is the outgoing chairman of the ISB board. They are the standard setter. Sir David Tweedy says, and I quote, If any one of you says they understand IS 39, they have not read the standard properly. Unquote. That is Sir David Tweedy. It's not a firm or anybody saying that. That's the chairman of the IS board. I don't think IS-39 is too complicated. Yes, practically it's difficult. Technically, it's a very, very easy standard to teach, to lecture. Conceptually, things are easy to explain. Practically is where we have the problems. But let's talk about IFRS 9. Why do we have IFRS 9? And this one year was influenced by politics. G20 leader says, we, we find this financial instruments thing too complicated. Post-crisis, there was a big hoo-ha about financial instruments. I don't know if you remember in 2008, there was also a big issue. You know, you have your good old categories under IS-39, available for sale, fair value to cost, profit or loss, health to maturity, loans and receivables. And generally, those classifications were cast in stone. In 2008, because of pressure from the European Union, the board had to bend over backwards and allow people to reclassify things in and out. Deutsche Bank took advantage of this. People thought this was nonsense because what they were doing is hiding losses on their Lehman portfolio. That was the reality. So this reclassification or this jumping into in and out of available for sale to health to maturity and in and out of fair value, the guidance in IS-39 was weak. So the G20, this is political people, saying improve the accounting for financial instruments. There, so there was a whole lot of discussions and papers and things that came out. And the outcome of that was we have a new standard called IFRS 9. But IFRS 9 is a funny little thing. I mean, the way they're giving it to you is in drips and drabs. <laughs> they're, giving, they're not giving you the whole thing. I mean, they, dealt, they gave you an exposure draft that only dealt with financial assets in July 2009. They gave you a standard in November 2009. In 2010, they gave you another standard that only deals with financial liabilities and derecognition. They still haven't dealt with impairment. They haven't dealt with hedge accounting. They haven't dealt with scope. They haven't dealt with how to measure amortized cost. So what we currently have is you look at, if you're following IFRS 9, You've got to look at some parts of IFRS 9, but you've still got to use IS-39. If you haven't early adopted IS-39, then you can use the IS-39. I mean, IFRS 9, you use IS-39 in its entirety. But the book is a mess. If you look at this book here, at the moment, because it's got both IFRS 9 and IS-39 in it, the word available for sale can't be found in this book. Because under IFRS 9, it doesn't exist. But anyway... Remember that. This is a mix-up. IFRS 9 is being issued in drips and drabs. The parts we may waiting for is impairment, hedge accounting. The parts we're going to be talking about now is assets and liabilities. And there's also a proposal, an ED at the moment, to delay the effective date to 2015. In fact, what I'm saying here, you still got to go back to IFRS 9 I'm uh, sorry, to IS-39 for scope, impairment requirements and hedge accounting.